वेलकम टू गॉड स्पीड ट्रैवलर और आज ही हमारा पहला कॉन्वर्सेशन है जस्ट टू बाइक हैविंग अ कॉन्वर्सेशन तो आई हैव विथ मी द वन एंड ओनली विशाल टू हैव इज ओन चैनल लाइफ ऑन फुल टाइम और आपने मुझे बहुत सारे वीडियोस में ब्लॉग्स में देखा होगा विथ विशाल भाई तो वी हैव डन कन्याकुमारी एंड वी हैव डन मैनी मोर राइट रिसेंटली आई थिंक वी डिट कोटा जीरी तो वी वी डन आई हैव to discuss a uh, few points few questions as writers let's see how it goes agar aap naye ho first time aa rahe ho channel pe to please subscribe my channel agar aapko vlog biking related stuff pasand hai to like this video aur kuch aur bhi pasand hai to comment down below shuru karte hain so vishal bhai aapne kafi sari kilometers cover kiye i think isse pehle aapke paas thunderbird thi abhi interceptor hai it's a damn good bike So my first question or first point would be that what pushed you to biking start? How did you? What was the reason you started biking? Okay. Why do you ride? <laughs> <laughs> so big question. I think uh, it has two aspects. One is uh, how I started biking or why I started biking, and then next is why I do biking. Basically. So. Uh, Why I started biking is was more like a middle age crisis, I would say. Somewhere around my uh, late thirty five, thirty six, I started feeling that is this my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, then I started introspecting that what were the thing actually that always kept me high in life whenever I was in full form of mind or the best version of mind. Mm-hmm. So obviously. the first thing was friends and second thing was uh, i used to bike a lot in my college times okay and that time i was not knowing that this is biking it was more of uh, for me it was more of traveling on bike so when you let me pick up one point from here so jab aap college mein the when you used to do a lot of biking what kind of trips you used to take like it was shorter trips longer trips or what was the inspiration you used to do solo or with friends so it used to be more of extempo if uh, i used to get a group of friends uh, because i used to be a very random guy mm-hmm. and suddenly i used to move out on the spur of a moment the moment i used to feel that i need to go out right. and i just used to pick up my bike i remember i was having splendor at that time and uh, i was in maharashtra so it was always situational suppose it's raining and i want to ride i just used to pick up my bike and go for a ride so around 100 200 kilometers and sometimes i did uh, long trips also entire maharashtra i roamed around and uh, so it was never planned okay. and it was no range kind of criteria uh-huh. as long as i used to feel i used to and keep traveling and i think that time roads also utne achhe nahi hote the right and Nine. you didn't have a good bike also because a normal bike normal Which bike, bike no hero honda splendor <laughs> okay so normal bike no riding gears right, right, just right. i used to put my helmet and go on okay okay great 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 nice so like uh, when you do biking and you've been doing it for some time so what are, what is the physical or mental impact of the biking which you feel okay. the changes which it brings to you positive negative anything right so probably it also connects with your second question that why i do biking exactly because how it connects mentally it's yeah. it's more of a mental thing for me yeah in your language motorcycle therapy <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, i've spoken about it many times on my channel as well right yeah so for me uh, i all i have tried lot of time to understand that why i do biking because there are moments when when i'm traveling long i'm i'm solo on highway barren highways especially in afternoon times many times i start feeling why i am doing this and i don't get the answer honestly speaking but when i am back within few days i again start feeling that i have to go for a ride and uh, i think it's a combination of things for me it's like uh, one is always taking break from the routine stressful life second is Uh, it it always makes me feel as if i'm in control of life right. it's it like takes me back to the days when i was uh, more of can do whatever what time whatever i want right. so and obviously freedom traveling 
that all comes together so i have still not got the exact answer why i write but it's more of combination yeah, i would just like to add my perspective to this so basically when i am riding i think obviously you have mentioned about the motorcycle therapy apart from that i think when i'm riding on a long ride so i've done like maharashtra 12 days ride and all so again same kind of questions come to me also because some at, at some point your body will start giving up yes your body will start feeling the pain and all those yes. things yes but i think because of that motivation and that rush you get when you're riding the bike of achieving something of completing something in your daily going life yes. so i think that actually overcomes the physical pain sometimes yes exactly Agreed. and this happens over the time it doesn't happen like it won't happen today or tomorrow but if you keep on riding keep on pushing maybe i think if there are any bikers then i think they will definitely relate to it yeah yeah it's it's like pleasure in pain right right so or you have changed from uh, like uh, i think you had thunderbird before now you have changed to interceptor so what was the reason behind it or maybe you got evolved as a biker what happened why okay. did you go went for it okay so uh, basically when i again picked up biking uh, after my introspection that what keeps me high right. uh, i first started with a rental bike i started and you actually classes. changed it quite like frequently, frequently suddenly with yes, a swing yes, of a mind right yes yes because i thought that you will continue with the uh, with the thunderbird, thunderbird for yes. quite a while yes. but suddenly you told me that i have sold my thunderbird, thunderbird and i have got the interceptor now so, so what happened that i started with a rental bike to just see whether what i am thinking is actually or not or i am just it's a, a spike of emotions so i did few rides with a rental one and i was die hard fan of classic but one day on a rental thing only i i got to ride thunderbird and i fell in love of that spontaneously and that was the time when i thought okay i'll buy a bike and uh, i went for thunderbird i started riding with it uh, up to 300 kilometers i was enjoying it but once i got an opportunity to ride with mandeep you know him very well yeah i know so it was a ride from bangalore to go and he was having interceptor okay and that was a first real uh, uh ride for me 12 hours 14 hours kind of thing beautiful ride but there is where i realize that i need little more power i think mm. and when you go in that range of riding your saddle time still has to remain what you can tolerate i get you brother <laughs> because i also had a classic and now i have changed to this beast yeah. so yeah i know that and there is when i tried mandeep's thunder uh, interceptor and i just fall in love again <laughs> so i keep falling in love with what different bikes and uh, immediately i think we know within a month mandeep, i think mandeep mandeep has got some kind of energy yes. that pushes people to change, change their the bike. bike yes because you know guys what happened he rode with him to goa he changed his bike to interceptor i rode with him and him both mandeep and vishal bhai to kota giri and then uh, immediately after that i was like it was there in my mind for some time but that final push i think i got from that trip. yeah exactly that happens and just to mention uh, there is a series called rise on youtube which i have watched it i think two or three times so that series actually uh, like gives you a quote picking a quote from that that the roads have all the answers exactly. so i think that is another thing that inspires me so just mentioning it here so that if any biker brothers or sisters are here they can go and watch it you should also watch it yes uh, definitely and now i'm falling in love with your bike <laughs> so let's see when i have this <laughs> yeah yeah you can actually but you know interceptor is more powerful than adventure 390 yes uh, i have realized it if you ride it properly then i think you can easily overtook take me at my highest also because that bike you can take it up to 200 this uh, can 160 170 maximum it will go okay again i am not making any claims okay. but that's what i have felt okay so yeah that's that's pretty much it okay uh, let's talk about riding so i think we we met uh, during based out in bangalore it's a great club for bullet owners so i think at that point of time also i also didn't had any riding buddy you also didn't had and we met yes it so it yeah. was a destiny yes. yeah it was a destiny but after that suddenly we kind of uh, moved slightly drifted away from that and we focused more on riding with smaller groups or even with solo formation so what is your thinking about it i will give my perspective also but first i would like to know that what is your thinking or your background about it? 
ओके सो आई थिंक दैट एक्सपीरियंस विद ग्रुप्स वर ऑसम एंड द काइंड ऑफ ब्रदरहुड यू गेट देयर एब्सोल्यूटली दोज गाइज आर सो वॉम एंड वेलकमिंग that uh, you actually get bonded there and and you learn and a lot kind of discipline yes, also they yes, follow yes. i think that's exactly. absolutely they are good. very safe you you learn a lot with them you enjoy you evolve a lot uh, but as i said that uh, i was always since college time more of a random and extempore guy you know my plans are uncertain till last moment and sometimes suddenly the plans will come up and uh, luckily you were there always to complement that randomness so i think that is the rhythm uh, i think rather than complimenting i push you sometimes many times many times yes, yes. you most of the time you do you don't keep me sleep calmly more than 3 exactly. to 4 weeks uh, that let's go for a ride let's go for a ride definitely and that is what i think it was a destiny that we suddenly met and we we were at a same stage of riding experience our style of riding were same our Uh, vibes were same, mentality were same. I think. I think so that's that, very important. And so that naturally we started riding. It's like a partnership you have, no? Yes. Ah, uh, like in cricket we have a striker and a non-striker. So that understanding when they are running between the wickets and playing. Right. I think that kind of uh, analogy is also implied here as well. Yes. So yeah, I think that 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 is another thing. Exactly. Ah. Uh, okay. So. continuing on that i would say that from my perspective i think i i generally like to keep the group short okay generally i don't like traveling with bigger groups that's just my preference yeah i definitely have enjoyed fully in future also i might ride with them but mostly i prefer uh, riding either alone or a solo way because i am my boss by the way guys there's a video on solo versus group travel i'm just plugging it in so you can go check it out it's linked in the i button as well as in the description so just go and check it out like what are the advantages and disadvantages that's just based on my experience so what i feel is like when you're riding in a smaller group or even in a solo ride i think you tend to enjoy more because in the bigger groups i feel that if you know everyone you have been there for like 5 10 years then it's good all good and well but if not then generally people tend to form even smaller groups and you kind of feel left out i'm sorry i uh, i think it's it's more of an individual's preference it's like it's taste exactly for me i mostly it depends like if i'm blogging and mostly i am when i'm riding i'm blogging i'm taking pictures so during those times it's difficult to ride with a bigger group because you find few spots where you really want to stop and capture those scenes while few points you just want to accelerate so those things it's little difficult you have to adjust yourself a lot when you're riding with a bigger group but when you're riding with a smaller group and especially a vlogger like you itself or even with a friends they will adjust with you or you can adjust with them and it's all well and good yeah that is another aspect actually what you brought is a very important point when you are vlogging obviously get keeping that discipline with a group is a is a difficult task right mm-hmm. and when you are in a group you are a group you you are not an individual you have to follow the discipline you have to complement everybody yeah. and in vlogging it is very difficult and that is given actually yes. uh, it's it's uh, it's important that when you are f- uh, traveling with a group you have to take into consideration that you have to respect the wishes of the group yes. you have to follow that discipline exactly if not then it's better to ride in a smaller group or solo ride right but yeah i think every group ride or solo ride or riding with a smaller or bigger group that has its own advantage and disadvantage so people can take it for okay moving on i have another question uh, when i started biking so i i didn't know anything about bikes okay what is off roading tire what is fog lamp what is uh, break in period of a bike what about anything about engine oil mileage nothing i have known nothing Yeah, I didn't know anything about bikes, but then when I started riding, I started doing some research. And even when I took my second bike, that is the Adventure 390. So even before that, I did even more and more research. So I started to get some knowledge about it. Still, I don't have that much knowledge. So I wanted to know from your perspective uh, how much you have learned till you started from the point you have started biking. How much you have learned about biking, and do you know? about doing some basic things like servicing or repairing i will learn that or still trying to learn or interested in learning and how important is it to learn that okay so uh, i think i learned from different sources 
वन वॉज ऑब्वियसली यूट्यूब यू गेट लॉट ऑफ स्टफ एंड वेन यू आर अ बिगनर योर लर्निंग कर्व इज़ वेरी स्टीप विद हेल्प ऑफ यूट्यूब दिस डेज अपार्ट फ्राम दैट मंदीप हेल्प मी अ लॉट आई थिंक विद हिम आई हैड लॉट ऑफ कॉन्वर्जेशन ऑन व्हाट्सएप ऑन चाय पॉइंट्स ऑन राइट सो ही वॉज ऑलवेज अ पर्सन विद सच अ रिच एक्सपीरियंस दैट एवरी आंसर वॉज रेडिली अवेलेबल विद हिम सो दैट वॉज वन एडवांटेज दैट आई वॉज हैविंग रेस्ट आई थिंक आई इवॉल्ड when i started writing there was a point that when i just started writing and i started solo basically and uh, once you start the journey you start evolving also on the way you learn many things you make mistakes you understand your riding style you correct your discipline you correct your saddle time you correct about the bikes also what i or when used to use i would say yeah the dark trip was also one of the game changer for me that was one trip which gave i think in one trip you get an experience what you get in 5 to 6 to 7 years after riding in different trails so that is one a crash course for yeah, you i would say one point or one question i would like to have a follow up question on the ladakh trip since you mentioned it so i think you you flew to new delhi and then took a bike from there yes and most of the i think 70% of the people at least from bangalore kerala tamil nadu from the southern part which is quite far from that place does that so and but people like me who are little mad or some other people also they prefer to take their bike so like what do you say about this point see going from your origin and with your bike there is nothing like that because the feeling of doing thing end to end on your bike is not comparable But yeah, so your bike as as in not my bike, but uh, your bike which you own it, right? Exactly. When I say uh, own it, so your when I say so it's your own bike, and doing it end to end is a feeling of complacency because nothing can be done beyond that, right? Right. And then you also live that memory with your bike that okay, what you have done with this machine or this bond throughout your journey. So that is uh, not comparable. But yeah, sometimes you have to. Uh, chase and achieve your dreams in your boundary conditions, and that is why people have. I to think fly that the is name. quite important. Actually, you have to keep moving, irrespective. Yes. Yes. Uh, life will always not be what you expect exactly. it to be. It will not go as you want it to be. But definitely, there is. That's up to you. If you want to really give up on your hopes and dreams, or you want to achieve it anyways. So yeah, keep moving. That's I think important part. Yeah, if you are uh, logistics, if you are. current life situation and all those things allows you to take your bike for a 20 21 days trip then i think that nothing like that right but if not then you do it anyways that's important okay i think uh, we have kind of reached to the last part of the interview so i think one more question i would have is uh, maybe second last question i would say that we you see that we are wearing lot of riding gears right now So, how important do you think is riding gears? I think it's a very childish or a very general question, but I thought that in India we see that people are not even wearing helmets. So that's why I thought maybe I will bring this point that when we are wearing riding gears, people look at us like we are aliens or we have come from some other planet. So, what is your take on this whole point, whole scenario? Not just people looking at us, but also in general protection wise and ride what riding gears offer. Challenges you have faced, all those things in a like holistic way, you can mention. Okay, so riding gear is something uh, is more about your sense of responsibility towards yourself and your loved ones because anyways you are in a risky sport. Right. So uh, I would say there are people who will debate that riding gear just helps mostly with abrasions, not with impact. But uh, uh, the one aspect is safety. which is always foremost you should take care of yourself as much you can and that happens so since when biking becomes a sport for you obviously you will not ride without riding gears because every sport has their own attire protocol way of doing things to improve your efficiency to improve your performance right uh, so uh, have you seen ever people doing paragliding or uh, uh, Sea walk or scuba diving without required gears. So I don't know why people do biking without gears. It's not something flashy. It's a part of that sport. That is one I think main important thing. Apart from that, uh, 
uh, it it brings uh, initially it is very discomfortable but then you once you get habitual without it you feel lot of discomfort and i think nowadays lot of innovation is happening actually in riding gears so they are making it more and more comfortable for you at the same time pro- offering the maximum protection yes so talking about the second part of the question is like people look at you as you have come from a different planet so how do you deal with that and basically what would you like to say on about that yeah so uh, there are uh, two part of this coin i would say one is uh, sometimes you have to be little mindful where are you taking breaks in which environment you are taking breaks so that the crowd around understands what you are doing or they are not totally uh, taking you as an alien uh, but eventually i am also feeling that the way biking culture is developing in india Uh, uh, in last 6 7 years it has actually g- got many folds up so uh, i see that now people are slowly getting habitual about it they have lot of understanding that mm-hmm. what are these guys doing okay. so uh, that uh, i think slow, until as you are in a very vernacular countryside environment you are not facing that challenge now nice okay i think my perspective or my take on the whole riding gear thing just like to add that guys when you are uh, when you are buying a new bike or you are buying a luggage system decide as per your budget but when you are buying a riding gear don't hold back spend as much as you can because i think if you are there then only your bike your luggage your everything is there if you are not there something breaks something happens to you i think your family is waiting for you but biking is important joy joyfulness in your life is important but i think few other things like your parents your family is more important than this so be, just if you're not thinking about yourself just think about the people who are waiting for you so i think spend as much as you can on the riding gear so yeah that's that's my take on the riding gear exactly that is the biggest thing i have also observed people spend on bike and then when it comes to riding gear they start with something available very economical which is not very safe yeah. it's not wrong See the first thing is you should have something first of all exactly at least you are having that means intention is good second you don't hold back yourself because something you are not able to get because right. your passion is always uh, that but uh, at the same time slowly work out how you can be better in your wardrobe of ride riding gears like when i started i was also short on budget so i i went with a basic uh, mesh jacket but yeah with my research at least i was able to find that within minimum budget right, right. what best uh, safety i can get i got i got level 2 exactly. uh, armors in this jacket so and it was not so costly i think that time it costed around 5 and a half k or 6 uh, k bucks which was manageable and i i started taking things uh, in step by step right, right, right. oh that's a good thing okay i think the last question i would have for you is it's little bit out of context not much related to the bike and technicalities but more related to something else so i think that uh, like when you are biking and doing all those things do you feel any spiritual connection of biking or anything or the sports or when you are traveling do you feel any effect of that yeah i think uh... I don't know I can call it spiritual connect or not but yeah I see lot of connect with myself when I'm biking so there are it's it's not entire ride or it's not every ride but sometimes you get into that zone where uh, you are just flowing and and when you are and you are done with your thoughts when right. when you start doing something you start biking or journey whatever you have a drill rush then you have your thoughts but then a stage comes when you are done with everything you are little empty and that is the time if you are lucky you start getting connected with yourself nice. so that is what i'll call a spiritual experience for me yeah. nice yeah and i would just like to add that even i feel the same way sometimes when i'm doing long rides i feel that me and my bike has become one kind of thing kind of feeling so when i'm taking the turns doing cornering and all those things i'm feeling my bike that what is happening around i can feel it literally so that is one of the things i could feel and then again during our bikes we have had a lot of uh, experiences some encounters some supernatural things but i think that will probably take another vlog yes. or another video and i think vishal bhai he has 
he is such a good conversationalist that I think he has at least 20 to 25 more uh, podcasts in, it, in him. So we'll probably have another video, Not try, trying not to make this one too long, too boring for you. Thank you Vishal Bhai, thank you so much for being here. Bye now.